<laughs> wow, look at my face. Hey everybody, this is Eric with Eric's Tree Service in Montrose, Colorado. Today I'm out trimming up the roof line on a house, making um, some clearancing, or doing some clearancing, I should say. Um, we're working to try to get his property slowly but surely under control. Had no idea I had that much junk on my face, sorry. But I wanted to come with you, or come to you with this real quick. So, um, when I was at the 2018, um, no, 2019 Arbor Fest uh, by Cheryl Tree, and I spoke with the Silky guys, the Silky reps, I mentioned to them that I had broken two of my Silky Pole Saw uh, blades. They said they have never heard of anybody breaking a silky Zubat blade on a pole saw. I, I have a hard time believing that simply because this blade here, while it cuts really well, is very flimsy toward the end and it pinches if you're trying to get um, some of the uh, branches that are at the limit of this pole saw. So, um, especially like this pine, it's super pitchy. Well, actually this is a fir, but anyway, it's super pitchy. And it does have an issue going through, as you can see here. Now, I will say that that's a con to the Silky Zubat pole saw. I have the 13 foot one that extends to 13 foot, but when you do cut it down like this, it actually becomes quite handy for pruning larger fruit trees because the blade is shorter. It fits into tighter places a little bit without hitting branches on the other side. Um, you can grind this down or cut it with a cutoff wheel a little bit, make it narrower almost to a point and modify it slightly and use this for a long time. I actually used my last blade almost equal amounts of time after it had broken as I'd had before it broke. So um, I'm curious, is anybody else having their, having problems with when you use your Zubat pole saw regularly? I mean a lot, cause I climb with it, I do everything with it. I use it almost every other day, most likely if I averaged it out. Um, are you having issues breaking the tips off? of your blade or breaking it, you know, about two thirds up or um, in half, I would really like to know, am I, am I just doing something wrong? I mean, this is at the length, as you can see those up there, this is at about its max length for this. I do have a Hayoku, a Hayuchi, what is it called? You know, hi, hi, um, What is this one? A hi, Hayuchi? Is that, yeah, Hayuchi, however you say that? And I do like this. I do like this. Where is it at? There it is. It's hard to point backwards in this thing. I do like this saw, but the problem with this pole saw is, is that, first off, the hooks, while they're super beneficial at the tip and at the back, in tight spaces like these really tight growing first it's hard to get the blade in there and second off the blade is so wide that it tends to rub really bad on the top branch on a lot of stuff so you're actually cutting through the cambium layer through the top of the saw which i don't like on that for certain things and then the other thing is the teeth the teeth on this one the hi, hiuchi or whatever it's called is really really aggressive um, and so on smaller branches, especially like on elm trees or cottonwoods or some ash, it doesn't really cut. It just ends up breaking the, the, the branch off and snapping it off. So, um, you know, we'll go more into this stuff in another podcast that I'm doing about pole saws, what pole saws I have, why I have two very expensive pole saws and how I use them in my tree work. But here's a brief overview for you guys for a um, product review on them and some of the frustrations I'm dealing with them, but some of the pros they have as well. 
see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please check out the affiliate link in the description of this video and hope to get you as a subscriber to my podcast. It'll be posted in video form on YouTube as well as in audio form so you can download it via um, anchor.fm or any of your favorite podcast hosts. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.